I'm here at the Institution of Civil Engineers outside their ICE Superheroes exhibition and I'm going to talk to you today about an engineering superhero. In 1837 in India a famine occurred in a place called the Doab region. It's been located in modern-day Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand. The drought came about because of the failure of the rains. When the lack of rain occurred the crops failed and by 1838, 800,000 people had died from starvation. This disaster was so huge, the British authorities decided they had to famine-proof the region by making sure they could have enough water to grow crops. To do this, they turned to a civil engineering hero by the name of Sir Thomas Proby Coutley. Coutley, originally from Norfolk in England, was an engineer who was a pioneer in canal building in India. His vision was to divert the water from the Ganja River near the Himalayas and bring it by a canal all the way down to the Doab Plains. To do this, he had to overcome political opposition as well as technical challenges. The political problems included the British authorities who had to be sure that they could afford to pay for the infrastructure. Coutley did this by calculating that the amount of money raised from water rates charged the farmers as well as the wider economic benefits from having more crops would more than justify the expense on the canal. Next he had to overcome some spiritual concerns. The Ganja River is India's most holy river and where he proposed to build a dam to divert it into the canal was at a place called Haridwar near the Himalayas. Here the holy priests were concerned that the dam would trap the spirit of the river and that the river would no longer be holy. Coutley's solution was to leave a gap in the dam to allow the Ganja River flow freely and retain its holiness. He also undertook some improvement works by building new bathing ghats for the many pilgrims who come to the area. With the political and spiritual challenges overcome, he next turned to the design of the canal. For the canal to be effective, it has to be kept as close as possible to the ground levels that it passes through. This is to minimise the amount of construction needed, which keeps the costs down and allows you to build it quicker. The design of the canal bed also had to be done in a very careful manner. If the slope of the bed was too sharp, the water would run too quickly and wear away the canal bed. If it was too shallow, the water wouldn't be able to run fast enough, it would become still and potentially stagnant, which could poison the crops. Once he had these designs fixed, Kauti could then look at how to protect the Ganja Canal from the massive flooding that happens near the Himalayas. In the northern section between Haridwar and Rurki, the canal passes parallel to the base of the Himalaya mountains. These mountains drain themselves using what's called a torrent, a natural phenomenon where the flood water comes crashing down the mountain in existing channels. If Kautli's canal didn't protect itself from these great floodwaters, it would have been washed away completely. His design was really, really simple and elegant. He built what was called super passageways and kept the canal structure itself safe from the floods. He did something slightly different at a place called Rurki. Here, instead of having the floodwaters flow above the canal, he created an aqueduct, the Solini Aqueduct, a beautiful pink brick structure that is 225 metres long, 60 metres wide and carries the canal bed 25 metres above the flood water. This structure was so well built and designed that it was only 140 years later that it had to be replaced. As well as the design challenges he faced, some of the construction challenges included having to build enough bricks for his project. He created a factory at Rurki that was able to produce 100,000 bricks a day for the many millions needed for his project. Today the canal is still going strong. It is an important piece of infrastructure that still provides irrigation water for India. So why did I choose this to talk about as part of the ICE 200 celebrations? I am a civil engineer and I wanted to have a career where I can make a difference to people's lives that lasts beyond my own lifetime. The Ganja Canal as a piece of infrastructure is still in use 160 years later. It's been extended many times and is now 440 kilometres long and brings life-giving water to an area of 9,000 square kilometres. But 
As a piece of infrastructure that saves lives, it also has done so much more. It's provided inspiration for the next generation. The original canal builders knew that they would have to take care of the next generation of engineers and inspire and train them themselves. What they did was to found the University College Rookie, India's first civil engineering college. This college, which is now called the Indian Institute of Technology Rookie, trains civil engineers not only to work on projects like the Ganja Canal, but on other infrastructure projects in India. Although the Ganja Canal is now over 150, 160 years old, it shows us what we need to think about when we face the challenges today. Global warming, scarcity of water, increasing populations, potentially more famines are all challenges that we as civil engineers are best placed to resolve. By taking a job in our industry, you can help plan and deliver fantastic infrastructure like the Ganja Canal that can help solve real problems in our society, in our globe and help provide a lasting legacy that lives well beyond you.